Hi, my name is Andy Roberts. I'm the creator of Live Parts. And in this video, I'm going to show you a quick overview of the user interface for the Live Parts for SolidWorks plugin. So we implemented the functionality for Live Parts inside SolidWorks using the assembly mode. So to begin, you open up an assembly of yours and you can create parts or use existing parts to define the geometry that's going to become the important areas of your live part. So the functionality appears as a ribbon across the top and you'll see in this ribbon a set of features that you can add uh, gradient force, fixture, connections, seed cell, symmetry, and wall. And when you add these features they get added, added to the assembly as assembly level features. And the power of this is that the features are able to reference the geometry of any of the other parts in the assembly. So for example, I can have a gradient here that references this green shape. This is a container. I can have another gradient that references another body in the assembly, which is an attractor zone. I can have a gradient that references a piece of geometry that's a keep out zone. And these can all be in different regions of the assembly. So you add these features to the assembly level and you can turn them on and off using the typical suppress and resume um, commands and of course when you make a change to the assembly everything updates automatically. The other functions in the Live Parts SolidWorks plugin are the settings here which allow you to define parameters such as the cell size, the gravity forces. Um, you really don't need to do anything to change these other than perhaps go in and change the cell size. If you want the cells to be smaller than the 1% um, the one percentage default that they typically are. You can specify them as absolute or percentage values. Sometimes you might want to go in and set the parameter size to be something like um, a millimeter dimension that you have um, that you want to specify like 0 0.8. Otherwise you can leave these as the default values. And then the last set of commands you use are the export and import commands. First you use export to save a file and upload it to the Amazon bucket where we transfer files to live parts. And once you grow the part inside live parts, you use the export over on the live parts side to send it back here where you use import to bring it into SolidWorks as a fully solid part. And I have an example of one of these here, which I can turn on. And you'll see that the parts are brought into the SolidWorks assembly and the files are placed on your disk. Um, so you have full control over these. And these parts are full solid parts. You can reference them um, with other features and you can also um, open these up in part mode and generate STL files for printing. So that's a quick overview of the user interface inside the Live Parts for SolidWorks plugin. Thank you.